We had so much fun tearing down the MetaQuest Pro that we decided to take a look at another popular headset on the market, the Valve Index. The Index was released all the way back in 2019, so it's not quite cutting edge tech. But now that VR and AR are a part of the mainstream tech landscape, we thought it would be good to see how different companies find solutions to the complexities of VR. Before we go on, a quick disclaimer. As you may know, iFixit partners with Valve to provide parts for their devices, including for the Valve Index. Now, our editorial process is completely independent and Valve had no say or input in the making of this video. On with the teardown. The Valve Index has some of the best tracking capabilities of any VR system, and it's mainly thanks to these base stations. Valve calls this a lighthouse, and pointing an IR camera at it quickly reveals why. Two infrared emitters sweep the room as a central rotor spins the emitters on a single axis. The overall effect is similar to how a lighthouse emits a beam of light at fixed intervals to aid navigation at sea. Now in this scenario we have two lighthouses and our vessel is the VR headset. The VR headset knows where it is because it's triangulating its position relative to the two lighthouses. I'd like to take a closer look at the internals but unfortunately I can't see an easy way in. Removing the bottom cushion doesn't help, and the only way inside the base station appears to be through the plastic face, and our x-rays from Creative Electron seem to confirm this. After several attempts at heating and prying, it becomes apparent that I'm gonna have to cut my way in. These base stations are clearly not designed to be repaired, which is a shame because it seems it would have been trivial to secure this plastic face with screws. Moving on to the controller, I need to pop away the circular plastic face using a pick. Lifting the face up reveals several torch screws and a few cables. One screw in particular is pretty well hidden underneath what looks like a touch sensor, and that one screw is the keystone holding the board and all the plastic components in. There's no more progress to be made through this side, but I've seen people attempt a battery replacement through the grip, so that's where I'm heading next. Popping away the plastic reveals the battery package sandwiched between the two halves of the controller. Removing the exposed screws doesn't help, so I'm going to move over to the tracking ring to see if I can gain access from there. This is where things start to get ugly. The plastic on the tracking ring is clearly clipped in place, but there's something preventing it from coming off. After much prying, I eventually ended up breaking the plastic, and what I found was a bit alarming. The glue they've used to secure the plastic is more like cement, which seems entirely inappropriate for this application. And because of all the prying to get the plastic off, several ribbon cables leading to the various IR sensors were damaged. The tracking ring itself is made up of multiple IR sensors which pick up the beams sent out by a lighthouse. By measuring the time it takes for the IR beams to hit a receiver, it's possible to use some clever maths to figure out exactly where each controller is in three-dimensional space. This is known as the time of flight principle for measuring distance between between objects. Lifting the tracking sensors away reveals a few more screws securing the strut and the base of the controller to the tracking ring. Now I can separate the two halves of the controller to reveal the mainboard and the battery pack. More ribbon cables, screws and press connectors, but eventually I can remove the PCB from the plastic frame. The battery looks a little homemade because of that outer wrapper, but it's a pretty standard lithium polymer rated at 4.18 watt hours. This will give you about 7 hours of continuous use, very similar to what we found in the MetaQuest Pro controllers. By the way, if you haven't seen the MetaQuest Pro teardown, you can click the link on screen or find the link in the description below. At this point I need to give a shout out to my colleague Sam Omiatek who wrote the repair guide for this device. We're so late to this teardown that we already have guides and parts on our website. I'll be following Sam's guide for the most part, and I'd recommend you do the same if you're repairing your device. Remember, this is a teardown, not a repair guide. Let's go back to those x-rays provided by our friends at Creative Electron to get a visual of what I'm getting myself into here. Hopefully not another 146 screw nightmare like the MetaQuest Pro. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the velcro head strap and face cushion, then the lengthy cable comes away fairly easily, and I can move on to the eye relief knob. This knob adjusts the distance between the lens and your eyes and pops off fairly easily with the help of a pick. There's a couple of screws underneath there and a 3T6 sits directly opposite. And with that, the head strap comes away. Take notes here, Meta. There's no speaker cable to finagle with either. They've used spring-loaded copper pins to make the whole assembly as modular as possible. Here's where the head strap falls short, though. These cushions really need to be replaceable. Cushions absorb sweat, as anyone who's ever used a VR headset can attest to. Let's remove the front cover which reveals the USB expansion port and several screws that give us access to the mainboard. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect a few ribbon cables, and with that I can remove the faceplate. And now it's just a matter of unscrewing a few screws holding the mainboard down. Heading back to the lens side, I'm going to remove the exposed screws holding the plastic frame which surrounds the Fresnel lenses. Concentric circles on these lenses magnify the image on the display and bring it into focus. Let's turn the device on its side now and take a look at the IPD adjustment tab. 
The interpupillary distance knob adjusts the distance between the two lenses, allowing you to center each lens on your own eyes. The index has an IPD range of 58mm to 70mm, which is pretty decent. Thanks to our repair guide, I also know that there's a screw hiding under here, so let's go ahead and remove that before going any further. Back to the front of the device to remove the upper and lower rails, securing the display panels in place, and once those are out, I can remove the plastic cover and rubber blackout around the lenses. It's now possible to gently nudge the lens assembly out and away from the main body. Each LCD panel runs at 1440 by 1600, supporting a refresh rate of up to 144Hz. Positioned side by side, the panels provide a combined resolution of 2880 by 1600 across both eyes. There's no mistaking the fact that this headset is in a league of its own. A lot of thought has gone into making sure that it's both comfortable and user-friendly. You can see that in the high accuracy base station setup and the extremely satisfying grip design on the controllers. And the software is really where it shines. Just compare Meta's sterile tutorials to the lively shenanigans of Valve. On the flip side, we have some issues where the base station is concerned. It's simply not user serviceable, and replacing the battery inside those controllers is less of a guided process and more of a workaround, unless you're willing to risk breaking the controller entirely. Still, credit where it's due, Valve does provide OEM replacement parts for many components inside this device, and they've shown that they're a company with a conscience by making their newest offering, the Steam Deck, a fully serviceable device. All eyes are now on Project Deckard, the follow-up device to the Index, and we're hoping that the company will address the repairability issues we found in the Index. Let us know if you want to see more VR teardowns by hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and drop a line in the comments. It really helps us spread the message about repairability and lets us know what you want to see more of.